second prediction that we find in the Holy Quran in the early days of Islam is the victory of the Romans over the Persians. Basically, in the first few, few verses of Surah Ar-Rum, the chapter of the Romans, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that the Romans have been defeated. غُلِبَتْ الرُّومِ but then within a few years, they shall achieve victory. In year 16, uh, 614, the Romans were defeated by the Persians, by the Persian Empire. And that saddened the Muslims, those early Muslims, why? Because the Romans were Christians, they were people of the book. Whereas the Persians were what? Idol worshippers. They were idol worshippers, they were not amongst the people of the book, they would worship fire sometimes, they would worship idols, they had two gods, right? They had false beliefs. And so the believers got upset because this was considered a victory for the pagans over the Ahl al-Kitab, the people of the book. And when the Persians defeated the Romans, the people of Mecca, the pagans, they rejoiced. They actually came to the Muslims and they told them, look, you see the Christians, they were defeated even though they supposedly have a divine book? Well, you're next Muslims. You claim to have a Quran, a divine book, you'll be defeated just like they were defeated. Just like the idol worshippers defeated them, we're going to defeat you. And this really saddened the Muslims. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals these verses informing the Muslims, yes, the Romans have been defeated, but soon. Fi bid'i sinin. Bid in Arabic refers to how many years? Three to nine. In Arabic, few, bid refers to three, from three to nine. Any number between three to nine would qualify as bid'i sinin within a few years. Allah says, don't worry, Muslims. Within a few years, the Romans shall defeat the Persians. And you, the believers, will rejoice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals these verses. Now remember one thing, the Quran made this prediction when all odds were against the Romans because now their armies have been crushed, they've been weakened. The Persian Empire, as a result of their victory, they felt emboldened, right? They became stronger. So for the Qur'an to make a prediction like that, it went against all odds. If you would ask any political analyst at the time, they would have told you that's a wrong prediction. No way the Romans within a few years, they're going to overpower the strong Persian Empire, impossible. But the Qur'an makes that um, statement, it makes that uh, a prediction. And in the year 624, so just a few years after that, you know, seven to eight years later, the Romans fully defeated the Persians. Now in doing so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made another prediction here. Allah says, when the Romans will defeat the Persians, the Muslim believers will also rejoice. Rejoice at what? Which victory? There was another victory that was concurrent with the victory of the Romans over the Persians. What was that victory? Year two of the Hijrah. What was the first victory in Islam in the Badr. Battle of Badr? In that Battle of Badr, we see that the Muslims after the Battle of Badr, they rejoiced, they were very happy that they defeated the pagans. That was concurrent with the victory of the Romans over the Persians. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one verse actually makes two predictions that the Romans will defeat the Persians and number two, you the believers will also rejoice at your victories. Well, how could someone make a prediction like that? Isn't that an indication that this was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So that's the second prediction that we have. The third prediction which follows from, you know, this final point that we mentioned is that the Holy Quran makes a number of predictions about the Battle of Badr <laughs> that the Muslims will achieve victory. Now this was also against all odds, why? The pagans outnumbered the Muslims, they were still weak, they had just formed a community whereas the Meccans you know had their strong society. If you look at the battle itself, 
The Muslims numbered how many at Badr? Same number of the companions of an Imam al Mahdi. So, what is it? 313. The Muslims were 313 at Badr. <laughs> the Muslims, they numbered 313. What about the pagans? Triple this number. Triple this number. Now imagine you're facing an army that's triple your size. And in terms of their weaponry, they had weapons, they had horses. The Muslims didn't have anything. Some narrations indicate they had a horse or two horses, that's it. And they're meeting an, a massive army that's three times their size that has the latest weapons. All odds were against them. Who would think that the Muslims could defeat them? Impossible. The Quran makes a number of predictions. For example, in verses 7 and 8 of Surah Al-Anfal and verses 44 and 45 of Surah Al-Qamar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes predictions that no, it's the disbelievers who will be defeated and it's the believers who will achieve victory in these battles. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes that prediction, it happens. They actually achieve that victory. So this is an indication that, you know, uh, this is this book is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in Surah Al-Qamar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that, yes, they have a large turnout, they have a big army, but سَيُهْزَمُ الْجَمْ وَيُوَلُّونَ الدُّبُرِ They shall be defeated and they'll flee the battlefield. Allah even gives us specifics. They'll flee the battlefield and that's exactly what happened at Badr. So this is the third prediction. The fourth prediction, there are many others, but these are just briefly some predictions. The final prediction we'll address is the prediction that the Prophet ﷺ will have a huge big progeny. Remember before we talked about the story of Al-As ibn Wa'il mocking the Prophet. He called him the Abtar because his son Abdullah had just died and the Prophet had no surviving sons. So he made fun of him, oh you're the Abtar, the one who does not have a line, children. Your line has been cut off. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals Surah Al-Kawthar. Allah rebukes that guy and he says, no, we have given the Prophet an abundant progeny. Well, when you say that at that time, when the Prophet really didn't have much, he did not have children yet who were surviving. How could you make a prediction like that? that the Prophet would have a huge progeny. How? Only Allah can make a prediction like that. But Allah makes that prediction in the Holy Quran. And by the way, Al-Fakhr al-Razi in his big tafsir, Sunni scholar, he says, SubhanAllah, look at the progeny of the Prophet from the Ahlul Bayt. No family has been, been, been massacred and killed like the Ahlul Bayt. Yet, you see them increasing and they have filled the world. Isn't that, you know, the prediction of the Qur'an materializing over here? How could the Holy Qur'an make a prediction like that? SubhanAllah. Look at the others. Bani Umayyah. Do you even know anybody today who comes from Bani Umayyah? So maybe just a few families, right? And they probably even don't even know. But look at Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. So these are a number of predictions that the Holy Qur'an makes when it comes to challenging us and to prove to us that this is the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is one factor that demonstrates the Holy Quran is from God. Predictions that have held true and no one has been able to challenge. Mm -hmm.